should have had. That's what we got. Look at that. Alright then. A bit of a different one today. I have glued up some drawers for the latest kitchen. Um, I was going to get some brass plaques made up with my logo on the sides of the drawers. But I've done so much for this kitchen, I've pretty much made it every single component. And I thought, that's not really ideal, is it, to, to buy something in to put on a drawer side. So, I've done a little bit of letter carving before. I, I'm not an expert. This is, I'm a bit of a budget, to be honest, at letter carving. So if you're a letter carving expert, look away now. But I'm gonna be putting my logo on this drawer side, which I've already glued up, so that makes it even harder. So I'm having to try and really, really clamp it into the vice here. It doesn't move without destroying it. But that's what I'm going to be carving today. I'm going to do the Bradshaw first, and I might attempt the joinery, but that is microscopic to try and carve with wood chisels into oak. So we'll see. I might have a little test room for a start the joinery, but I'm going in dry. I've not had a practice or anything. So let's have a go. I've already made my first mistake in that that's the front of the drawer. I don't know why I put myself through these things. So like I said, I am no professional. So you can draw this out by hand, marking all the letter in and doing the right radiuses and do it all technically correct. Or you can do it the Bradshaw way and print off your lettering on the computer in the style that you want. Now if you're looking for generic lettering then something like Optimus Princeps Bold might do you well. But uh, this is obviously my logo so it's a different font to that. But print that off, tape it to your workpiece along one inch Try and get it straight, but if it's not, it all adds to the character, doesn't it? And then to transfer that to what I'm going to be carving, just use some old school transfer paper. I know you kids aren't going to know what this is. This is effectively copy and paste in the 1980s. Once that's underneath, just draw around your lettering. And this doesn't look like a true letter carving font because the the V is quite oddly shaped here, yeah, so it should be interesting to try and follow. I'm not drawing all the way up the vertical uprights or the horizontal parts, so I'll just mark them off through the transfer paper with like the end marks. And I'll draw them on with a with a combi square in a minute, so I'll get nice straight lines for them points. And that makes all the difference in the quality. You just have a cheeky look to see how it's coming on. Not too bad. This is a well used bit of transfer paper, so I have to keep moving it to make sure it actually marks the paper. Now, I kind of taught myself how to do this. I mean, it, like I say, it's not, it's no professional way, and I'm sure if you're a letter card and expert, You'll be rolling around shouting no, 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 no. There's a really good book by Chris Pye that I bought and taught myself, or, or that taught me the basics of, you know, the basic fundamentals of how to hold the chisels, how to set the lettering out. So there's a, literally a, a double page spread for every single letter. It tells you sort of the that's the ratio of how thick these lines should be relative to the horizontal lines and which way around the A should be so one side's always thicker and like on a W uh, one, one diagonal is always thicker than the other diagonal so it's all explained in the book, really really good book if you want to teach yourself how to do some basic letter card and get it hands on with it so like I said, I'm definitely not become an expert but I've done a few pieces, I did quite a lot 
one stage and got quite good at it, but I honestly can't remember an awful lot about it from since I last did any. But the book's well worth a look, so I'll pop the link to the book in the description if I can find it, if it's still available. And uh, I'll probably try and find what chisels I was using as well, but the, the book actually details some good chisels to buy to sort of get you started off, so I'll uh, probably talk a bit more about that when I'm using each one. But I'm sure you can watch this in fast motion now. Oh, an S. Oh, I don't like S's. S's. S's for sucks. When it comes to letter gaming. Oh, my days, I forgot about S's. What was the worst letter? I can't remember. O's are pretty annoying because they have to be perfectly cylindrical on the outside and then the inside isn't. Pretty annoying. It's like about your chisel choice, you get the right chisel for the outside, then it doesn't work inside. So, drawing around this printed out piece just gives me a decent outline to work to. This isn't going to be like my final lines to work to, it just gives me like the basic layout and the spacing of the lettering. So, I know that looks right. I know the lettering reads right, so I'm not having to space it out and guess the gaps between the D and the S and the etc. So if you type that on a computer, the A and the W tend to space further apart because that point there and that point there are actually overlapping. So I'm a bit careful when you type it on the computer. So this is just giving me my, my basic layout, then I'll draw it in afterwards. So like I can just mark two positions on them lines then set up an uh, angle gauge. So I'll pretty much draw that W out just from those positions now. Probably get a square. Trend have been really good actually and sent me a load of tools. I actually bought this one and you wouldn't want for a better angle gauge but yeah, I fully recommend it. 72.1 that is. Let's set the height of the letter in. Take my 68 degree angle, bring it through that up to there, and then my 108.9. And I can draw my serifs in. So I think you can have a serif baseline. So if you put a Another faint line across there. It's the point at which the serifs will start. So serifs on the small ones aren't as big, obviously. A small little return back this way. So the little squiggly bits on the bottom are called serifs. They're great fun to cut out, they are. This little combination square was sent over to me from America by my cousin as a Christmas present. Purely for the fact that it only has inches in it and he thought it would annoy me. And it does. I mean, I can work in inches, but I mean, what does that mean? Like, to say you wanted to read what that measurement was there, past the four, so it's three and what? 
Whereas if it was a millimetres, you'd know that was one mil less than four. So it's just not ideal, is it? A wants to be the same height as that one. You know what, actually? It'd look quite good if you just lack it over that. Just sort of like a bit tech drawing. Cool, isn't it? Now, then, which one do I want to start on? Start on the big boy, shall we? So you can draw a line around the centre of everything. And that's your stop line. I think I just used to eyeball it. My letter carving isn't perfect. I've got the little uh, Ashley Isles chisels. Basically all you need is a couple of, of straight ones. These are the most important ones. They're the uh, fishtail chisels. So just a little fishtail curve and a fishtail flat. And you can pretty much carve anything with them. That's sort of what I go to the most. So I've got a selection of sort of a bigger flat than this one, so that's like a it's between five eighths and three quarters. What size is that? I'll use my handy. That is five eighths. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's a five eighths flat. Guess that is an inch flat. I've got a few curved chisels. I use them a little bit. But uh, the most important thing, like I say, are those fishtail chisels. But what you need to do with letter carving, it's a good lesson for all woodworking, is to create a stop line before you start your cut. So you end the cut before you start it. So working on the B here. I might get a different lens so I can zoom in actually. So stop the cut before you start it. So I'm going to start that one there. Ideally you'd want to cut that all with one chisel, so you'd, you can't do that because it's not practical, so you'd use this inch chisel and do it in two hits, so the less chops you can do the better, because then they don't have to align as much. It's not so bad for doing the stop line, it's more for doing the the actual v carve cut, but because I've already glued the drawer up and it's only held in the vise, not on, normally you'd sort of clamp this piece down on, onto a solid bench. And then you could really hammer into it, but because uh, we're in the vice, I'm just going to use a slightly smaller chisel and work this stop line down. And I, I just want to keep away from the serif, so the centre line I've drawn on is like the is the stop line basically. So you, you can't dig that in anywhere else. So if I extend that slightly along, so it's just above there, and then dig in, you'll see that stop line in this end bevel here. So You've got to be really careful at how deep you make the stop line and where you start and stop it. So the wider sections are obviously deeper because you, you're carving at the same angle. So if you've got a wider section at the same angle, it goes deeper than these really narrow sections. So I'm just going to whack a couple of hits down there. What I tend to do is just go around and do all the stop lines at the start. I don't know what I'm teaching, I'm just like I, I know what I'm doing. But what you need to do is just angle. So like on this serif here, it goes from nothing at this point here to the full depth of this stop line here when them two V-carved edges meet. So it needs to go from deep there to nothing there. So you need to angle that chisel at this sort of angle before it goes into the wood but you better need to bear in mind that this this corner needs to land right in the bottom of this V to have a clean cut when you, you're all said and done at the end so it's quite difficult to sort of aim it you get used to the feel of the angle of that after a while so by the time I'm done I'll be about ready to start Remember we're aiming for the centre of that uh, strike line. I 
doesn't matter if you go a little bit wayward, I mean, you'll give yourself a break, can you? I'm going to go lightly for a start. This one might be a better choice. Look at that. What we'll tell you is, you'll never have the perfect chisel. Remember, we're going to a smaller point here, so it's a lighter cut. We are not smashing the death out of it. Again, as it turns to the horizontal, smaller, thinner cut, lighter taps. He knocked it up then. I can take this out for a start then. The flat bits are the easiest, really. You just Getting on your line, holding it on the same angle all the time, and then only chiseling as deep so it meets perfectly in the middle. Not any deeper. Oh, oh la la. Ideally, those taps want to meet so that wood is fully cut, but. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that standard. So they weren't quite deep enough. But I'd personally rather slightly shy of the bottom of the cut. too much. You can go around afterwards and actually uh, stab into the bottom of that V. It's called, um, is it? it's called stabbing the centre or something. But uh, that can look quite good. It sort of exaggerates the letter. So generally I'll do all of the straight bits. So that's a bit of a straight there. So you've got to slice the grain uh, working in the direction the grain so that you not get any chips off of it. You gotta, you gotta really work with it. And then to do this serif up here, I've got my fishtail chisel. So that corner wants to land right in that groove, and that corner effectively land up here. So I need to pick the sort of right angle where that's going to happen. And then cut in. And stop, so don't try and remove that piece. It should come out from your stop line, but it might not. Same thing down here. Get the angle right. And then it's a case of cutting it in. I'm hoping you're about reet. Seam on this so there'll be a transition from that straight into this curve so it goes from like a really thick line to a thin one. So we'll do a bit of work on that. I'm not going to make any money doing this for a living. So I've got to be careful here. So I'm trying to chisel this way across the grain. So you do need really, really sharp chisels in order to get a really crisp cut on that. Piece right there. Now I'm just going to follow around with this fishtail gauge as far as it will let me really. Or the bevel 
starts to go too tight or too open. I'm just holding the chisel because I've got this hand around the handle and I can stand my weight around that and then the other hand to guide and you get your weight behind the chisel. And it's a very, very controlled push so if that broke through my chisel wouldn't carry on with it. Like the, the, My weight is very controlled. And just working that line to the centre. I'll do the same around this one. So I'm sort of eyeballing where I want that centre to fall. This is the most difficult bit, is to get right down into the centre of these curves when you haven't quite got the right shape chisel. So I'm just going to make sure I'm as close as I can get from one side. I don't want to make too many different cuts. But the inside is the most difficult. Because when you go to take, say if that was the perfect bevel for that curve, your points dig in when you're laying your chisel that way before the center. So the inside's pretty difficult to, to chop out. Whereas when you go in from this way, you can work the chisel around the corner or the curve quite easily, as long as it's the right bevel. So in that sense, We'll start with a fishtail where it's slightly flatter. Work that corner in. Probably a little bit heavy handed there. Swap to this one. The most important thing is that you cut every fibre rather than try and wiggle them off. So you're slicing every single grain of the wood to get that really nice smooth finish. Mm -hmm. It's just patient really. I always found this the, the hardest bit. Where well, you got this grain running along here, see it tapers off. So I've got to come in from this way to get this bevel. So I've got to come in here, strike that corner, this corner, and continue it on without digging it in. It's always found that pretty tricky to get absolutely spot on. A little bit, little bit rough around there. I'm not, uh, not overly happy with that outer curve. Chill this one out. I suppose I should have read my book to give myself a little bit of a refresher before I started. Oh well, which way is the grain going? It's kind of one of them non-grain situations, isn't it? Where it screws you, whatever.
Hey, how's that look? How's that look? That was the easiest one. Because it's the biggest one. I right, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to do too much with that until I've done the rest of these and then I can get them all to an even standard at the end. So that might end up looking really good by the time I've done all of these. So if I make it too good, I'll show these up. So let's crack on. I sincerely hope this is the right draw. You didn't even toy to gauge for that. Beautiful. Less tight gauge for there. Oh, it's gone well. It's gone so well. <laughs> that didn't. So small. Don't even see it. Don't get the right chisel in there. Oh, it's lovely and sharp. Da 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 da. I remember these were always quite difficult. <laughs> Top bit, so you've got no clearance. And you always snap this bit of grain here. See if I can be gunning. Not snap it. Oh god. Oh, 
Oh, it's not too bad. Not got a small enough chisel. You always get that problem, you know, when your tool's too big. Constant problem, that. Benny boy will know what I mean. Oh, why? To the D. I'm not going to make a joke. I'm just going to do the D and not say a thing. Except for apologies if you are a letter carver. Probably going to be a hard bit of watching for you. Oh, my S has actually turned out alright. Not really what you're sure what you're meant to do on these internals. Whether you meant to have an internal chisel with the corners ground right back so that you, you don't stab these corners in. So it's sort of like a smiley face shape as you look at it from this angle. And then you're getting them to the centre line really nicely on the internals, but I've not got two sets of chisels to be able to do that with. So I'm just going to have to work it around like a bit of a Guy, why, Derek? Oh, this is turning out all right. I was worried for a minute there. It's amazing how the light makes such a difference to letter carving. Like it looks like if the light's just completely flat on it, you can't see it. And then if you get a shadow on it, it makes all the difference. In. Bobbins, save it, save it. I think I just just save that. Oh, no one will see it. No one will see it.
These are the worst bits, I'm sure they're the hardest bits. Bits with the grain are so delicate. Stock cuts have to be spot on. W's gone above the baseline. No. I think they do actually. I think they are meant to protrude below. I think it works work quite well. Copy my logo. I like. Job you can't see my face. Full concentration face going on here. Always get chastised by my partner because she thinks I've got dodgy eyesight. So she made me go for an eye test. And the woman at the optician went through all the tests and she said, You've got very good eyesight. One eye is slightly better than the other but on the whole we're very good I said so would that be 2020 vision then I said it in America that would be deemed as 2020 vision so I went out smug as anything and told her what she had said don't believe me didn't believe me Of course, because it's not written, because it's not a British standard, it wasn't written on the report. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to go for another one. And just to prove her wrong. There we go. So it's not until you stand these up on a vertical plane that you really see the true sort of beauty. That's what we should have had. That's what we got. Look at that. This looks good actually. Hey, what do you reckon? Marks out of 10. So there we go. I'm pretty pleased with that. 
Let me know in the comments if you think I should attempt to do the little joinery bit as well. Bearing in mind, look, that R is about the width of my thumb. So you can imagine how small the, the joinery would be to try and carve in. So let me know if you think I should attempt it. Well, I think that looks bonny, looks good.